Hello everybody, this is Leah Sereni Rose actually going to open this Sonic the Hedgehog Encyclopedia that I got in the unpackaging that I unpackaged just now. And at the time of this recording, I pretty much got um, this yesterday, so I've been wanting this ever since they announced this is an actual Encyclopedia of actual lore of Sonic the Hedgehog. So if you want to get this, you could also you could order it off Amazon or I've heard you can buy this at Target as well from what I saw on the Target website so if you guys want like an actual Sonic lore book this is the book for you and if you're a huge fan of Sonic you can go get this it's a really nice cover like they have a deluxe version and the standard edition and this is the standard edition my friend Super Dan got me for Christmas this year so I'm going to be actually opening it because it's still wrapped in plastic as you can see it's still wrapped in plastic so we are actually going to be we're actually going to be actually actually opening this kind of took it had to open the mm, this is a lot stronger plastic than I expected but mm, as soon as I opened that it started to open so it's going to be taking off this plastic there we go so, see this is what the back looks like this is the cover cover is so nice so we're gonna actually go through it this is my first time looking at it so I'm going to be also reacting to this stuff as I go along and open the book so here is the actual the title the Encyclopedia. Here is a picture of Sonic with the ring behind him. Then here's here's the actual title again, and it's written by Ian Flynn. And also, this is um, published by Dark Horse Books. And here's all of the actual credits right here. And here's Sonic again. And then here's the actual table of contents. So this is a lot of stuff we need to go over. See, there's all of this. See, all of this stuff. So see, all of this stuff. So all of this stuff this is nice definitely nice see here's a here's a nice render of tails knuckles and sonic the og trio see, look at all see this render is so nice so beautiful here's an actual introduction and of course they're talking about 30 years a little fun fact about myself in my personal life What's really interesting is that um, my parents actually married in 1991. So the, they've been married for 30 years and my older brother is actually born in 1991, two months after the first Sonic the Hedgehog game came out. So in a funny way, Sonic is technically older than my brother by two months. So, And the funny thing is my parents also in, I did this very cute celebratory artwork of Sonic and Amy in, in wedding, wedding outfits because my parents have the same initials as Sonic and Amy, ironically, S and A. <laughs> and this is a nice introduction. And it has the Sonic series producer Takashi Azuka on there. Oh, there's Sonic right here. It's really cool. Here is... The 16-bit era, of course, as we know, Sonic's canon 
birthday is June 23, 1991. The first game came out. See, and there's like the different covers. This is the Ameri the American one. This one is the PAL version. And then this one is Japan's. That's so cool. This is definitely very nice. All of this stuff. Ooh, and it really even gives you the zones in, in the first game. Wow, this is so nice. And they're like really great quality. Very nice. And then here is there's Starlight Zone, Scrap Brain Zone, there's Special Stage, and then there's Final Zone. Oh, this is cute. They even put Sonic's expressions right here, and they're very high quality. This book is very nice, like the quality, the book quality is nice. Like, I really commend whoever designed this book, I really commend them. It's really... Like, it's really um, well thought out, and it really brings out the Sonic theme, like, very well. Ooh, and then here's the enemies page. Mm -hmm. Then here's some new faces. They really made them expressive, even though they didn't have voice back then. It's really nice. This book is very long, so <laughs> I'll probably just show you each of the pages, you know, so <laughs> I'll just show you the pages pretty fast because they're <laughs> this is a long book. It's really big. Let's see the Sonic Arcade Classics. Then there's the Sega Sonic Cosmo Fighter. I wish I would have seen one of these, but I haven't. And here's Sega Sonic Arcade, where they introduce Mighty and Ray. Yeah, it's really cool. Let's see, look at all this. Wow, they even put Sonic the Fighters. Yeah, it's cool. Here's Bean the Dynamite and Bark the Polar Bear. So, and they even put all the fighting stages in here too. They really put a lot of thought into this. Like, I can, I can understand why. Like, graphic design projects like these, they take a long while. Believe me. Especially if you're busy with other stuff. I can tell this book put a, they put a lot of love into this book and it's beautiful you know like all of these screenshots are really great quality they put a lot of love into this book and I like that and here's more enemies Then here's the animals from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Then here's, of course, Tails. Introduction of Tails in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Yeah, see. This book is really long, so <laughs> like I said, I'm just going to skim through it because it's very long and big. Because the Sonic the Hedgehog series has been around for 30 years, so they have a lot of content to cover. But this is a very nice book, I'll say. Very, very nice book. Oh, of course, Sonic CD, the introduction of Amy and Metal Sonic. And the cute thing is, it's funny because, like, technically Amy's birthday, you could say the, her canon birthday is September 23, 1993. And I was born two months after that, so my, and my birthday is November 23, so, so yeah, <laughs> it's very ironic. <laughs> Here's 
is Sonic Chaos. This is what this one is. Ooh, nice. Sonic Spin Ball. Yep, I'm going through this very fast and forgive me because this book is very big and it has a lot of pages as I showed you in the introduction table of contents. Of course, here's Sonic Drift, the ever first racing game in the Sonics, on, in the Sonic franchise. And then there's here's, here's a funny. <laughs> it's adorable. And then here's Sonic Drift 2. It feels like they were trying to compete with Mario Kart. It's very obvious. <laughs> and of course, um... Ooh, here's Amy. There's Eggman. There's Knuckles, there's Fang, there's Metal Sonic, and then this page is pretty nice. It's just like squares and rectangles and stuff. Here's Sonic the Hedgehog 3. The one where they introduce Knuckles. And of course there's more. Yep, this is a really big book and I'm only on page 52. <laughs> so this is, it's very, it's, it's very nice that they actually put all this like, you know, detail, especially in terms of the design and layout of the book of each page. It's different. It's not like repetitive or boring. So... This book is very beautiful, like I'll admit. The sprite, even the sprites, usually sprites is very hard to get all the details, but here it's very detailed enough where you can recognize it. Of course, there's Sonic in the spin dash. And there's Knuckles. And it's so cute. They actually have the expressions right there actual concept art that we can see. Sonic Triple Trouble. And there's of course the stages. They introduce the game and then they put the stages and whatnot and the bosses and the enemies from each game. I find that very organizational because they know not everyone's gonna remember all of the enemies. Oh, a Sonic learning game. Then there's Tales in the Music Maker. Then here's Sonic Schoolhouse. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very curious to know, comment down below, how many of you actually played Sonic Schoolhouse? Because I never played this, you know, like learning with Sonic type stuff, so... Curious to know how many of you actually played Sonic Schoolhouse. It's a... Here's Knuckles Chaotix, of course, where it introduces Charmy, Vector, and Espio. Of course, we, al we already knew Mighty from the Sega Sonic one. See, and here they are, right there. And here's more stages from Knuckles Chaotix. Enemies. But like I said, I'm just going to go as through this fast as I can because this book is very long. Very long. Of course, there's, there's Espio, Vector, Charmy. And 
And then here's Tail Sky Patrol. The, whoever, like I said, they put whoever their graphic designer who designed this book, they really did a great, awesome job on this. Yeah, see, I'm just, like I said, going through this book and actually skimming through it because this is a very long book, it's very big. And this is some of Tails Adventures. Tails Adventure enemies. Here's Sonic Labyrinth. Here's Here's the enemies. And then here's a nice pink one of squares and rectangles combined together. 3D blast. Yep, I am still in the in the Genesis area. So like I said, I'm just going to go as fast as I can just showcasing each of the pages cuz this is a long book. Got stuck there. Cuz this book is very long. I'm only on page 89 and it looks pretty long to me, so Here's Sonic R. And of course here's the racers. They introduced the racers for Sonic R. And of course we are in the Dreamcast era. The one with the one that started it all, Sonic Adventure. As I know. That Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 are like the, the popular Sonic games that a lot of Sonic fans love so much. Yep, they put all this detail into here and I find that super amazing because like... This is very nice. See, they really see they really show all the stuff. Of course, here's the characters. Of course, the playable characters are Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Big, and Gamma. And of course, there's also Tikal, but they didn't put an image for her for some odd reason, which is sad. But here's Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. Sonic Shuffle. Yep, all of this stuff. They actually put all of the stuff in here. I don't know how they got so committed to doing this, but it's amazing. Stages, and then of course the characters again. And then of course, the infamous Sonic Adventure 2. Of course, <laughs> they have to include it. It's one of the most popular and introduced, of course, Shadow the Hedgehog, as most Sonic fans know. And this is pretty um, positively acclaimed because of the story. Of course, here's more of this. And then they actually put the picture of the Chow here. That's so cute. There's the neutral, there's the dark, and then there's the hero chow. Then all the all the upgrades the characters can get, and there's the enemies. Of course, here's the bosses in hero story, dark story. Of 
Oh, sorry about that. Then, of course, here's the infamous Shadow and Rouge, and then there's Professor Gerald and Maria Robotnik. Of course, there's Gun, and there's the Cyclone. I don't know why the Cyclone is considered a character, but okay. <laughs> there's Sonic Advance, the first one. Of course, like I said, I'm just going through this very fast because this book is very, very big <laughs> and long. So, so forgive me if I'm going too fast. And here's Sonic Advance 2. And I, I believe, if I remember correctly, Amy is, a, is an unlockable one. Because it only involves Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Cream in the story. And Amy's not involved in this story for some reason. And of course, here's more of the stages. And then here's the actual, like, one. See, there's Cream, no Cheese, Knuckles, and Tails. I don't know if they even mention if she's unlockable. But that's what I've heard, but I could be wrong. See, and there's cream and cheese. And then, of course, another popular one, Sonic Heroes. And, of course, the popular theme song called Sonic Heroes, which is performed by Crush 40. The one that started the teams. Of course, there is Team Sonic right there. Then there's Team Rose. Then there's Team Dark and Team Chaotix. So, yep, they show all the stages. This is probably going to be a long one because they are going through each of the character, each of the team's stories, I believe. Could be wrong, but. And then here, the special, yeah, they're talking about the special stages. And horse here. Oh, here's three of the four teams. See? And of course, they kind of show a bit of the cutscenes a bit. And then there's the enemies. Then there's the bosses. And then here's the new faces. Of course, there's Omega. And then there's Neo Metal Sonic right there. And then there's Team Chaotix. Without Mighty. And there's... Oh, of course, a nice, great alternate art style they did is Sonic Battle. This art style is amazing. And then there's artworks. Yeah, this book is really long. <laughs> so, I... But like I said, I'm just going to skim. Just so... I'm not boring you guys. There's Sonic Advance 3. And then of course, here's the teams. And of course, if you when you play Sonic Advance 3 for those who have, if you pair up certain characters, you um, they give like some interesting team names like um, with Sonic and Tails it would be Unbreakable Bond and if it's Sonic and Knuckles it would be Fighting Buddies if it's Sonic and Amy it would be Lovely Couple if it's Amy and Cream it's Team Jubilee which I don't know how come they couldn't come up with one for Tails and Knuckles which I find interesting so I found that interesting. They never made a team name for Tails and Knuckles, but I guess at the time, uh, of course, Shadow the Hedgehog, the game itself, which is named after him. And yeah, there's like mixed receptions about this game, and I don't blame them because, like, it feels kind of weird, I guess, because like, an actual Sonic character is actually using a gun. <laughs> so, I don't blame people's like reaction to it. It's very mixed and stuff.
But it's very funny because, like, when I saw the Shadow the Hedgehog gameplay, it reminds me so much of Jack 2. And I am a huge Jack and Dexter fan when I was younger. And, yeah, it was, it took, like, a dark turn in Jack 2 because they tried to imitate Grand Theft Auto and stuff. But, yeah, that's, that's what the Shell the Hedgehog game gives me in terms of the vibes. Of course, there's the Gun Commander, Black Doom. Of course, the character is right there. Oh, Sonic Rush. Yes. I did play the... I did play both of them, but I never finished them. But yeah, Blaze is a really great addition. She added she added like some some new great taste in terms of the Sonic characters stuff. So yeah, here the Sonic Rush stuff. Yep. And of course Eggman Mega. And there's Blaze right there. Ah, uh, of course, this game. <laughs> yep, this game is very infamous for its horrible glitches that mess you up when you're playing. Yep, and I've seen the glitches and stuff, so I can see why lots of people complained, but I heard that this game was rushed, you know, in terms of the in terms of development, which is why the why the game seems unplayable at times and you want to like throw your controller but yeah uh, of course the infamous of course that infamous not the least kissing sonic stuff of course here's sonic writers the first one this art style was amazing like they come up with like interesting art styles and whatnot this art style is really nice and whatnot. And then here's the extreme gear list. And then there, of course, the new faces, the Babylon Rogues, along with the E1000 series. There's Jet, Wave, Storm, and the E1000 series. Ah, Sonic Rivals. I guess they do count it as canon. Because <laughs> some people think because since Sonic Rivals never, Sonic Rivals 1 and 2 never released in Japan. Which I find very odd, cause the both of them were on the PSP, so I find that super weird. Oh. oh yes, the infamous skins, the nice outfits you can give the characters that you can unlock. Then there's this. Ah, Sonic Rivals 2! Oh man. <laughs> This page, yep, Sonic Rivals 2, and it doubles it to 8 characters and stuff, so they put the main Sonic guys here, my guys. See, and here's the costumes of all the characters. See, there's Sonic, he has four, yeah, each of the characters, all eight of the characters have four costumes. Stuff, and then of course... There's SBO and Rouge, and then there's Metal Sonic 3.0. He's like you. Ah, Sonic and the Secret Rings. The one that's inspired off Aladdin and the Arabian Nights. And then, of course, here's the new faces. There's Shara, there's a Razor Jin, of course, the Dark Spine Sonic, the Self Seven World Rings. Ooh -hoo. And then there's Eggman as King Shariar. There's King Solomon. Then there's Alibaba Sinban. Ah, Sonic Rush Adventure. Yep, the one where they introduced Marine. Of course, they're just showing the vehicles, the uh, whatnot. So, I'm sorry if I'm going a bit. Enemy appearances. Yep, and this is the official artwork. Then there's the bosses. Then there's Ghost Rex, Ghost Whale, and then of course there's Marine. 
And then there's the Coconut Crew. Then there's, of course, Captain Whisker and Johnny. Ah, uh, Flag Rider Zero Gravity. I have so many fond memories of this game. I just love the the gravity mechanic because it makes it so much easier to do those turns. I really sucked at the first Sonic Riders game. Like, I could never turn at the right time for some odd reason. <laughs> but yeah, but this game made it so much easier. Ah, and of course here is the characters. Like I said, this book is very long. <laughs> And of course, this is all the gear, so if you played the game, then you would know all of the gear that you could possibly use. Ah, Sonic Unleashed! Or known in Japan as Sonic, Sonic World Adventure. Yep. Of course, this one has the day and night mechanic. Of course, there's Tails and Amy. And of course, they're going to introduce Chip. And and flash light Gaia. See? Look at all these. They put all this stuff. Wow. It's a lot of detail. Yep, all of this stuff. Then there's the bosses. And of course, the new faces. There's cute little Chip, also known as Light Gaia. Then it's Professor Pickle, and then this is, of course, this wasn't this. You could say this is like the precursor to Orbot SA55. He had a completely different voice. And then, of course, the Werehog. Ah, Sonic Chronicles. This one, had, this game had like a lot of mixed reception. I would say I've played this, but I love RPGs. You know turn base so I was able to beat this game and stuff like I really love the RPG I wish Sonic would do more RPG like you know similar to like Mario Luigi RPG series that series is awesome so I wish they would do more Sonic RPG because if they can get it correct you know in terms of how to you know if they did something similar like I said to like the Mario Luigi RPG series then you know, I would commend them because, like, I love playing the Mario and Luigi RPG games. They're they're so fun. Like, they really give Mario and Luigi like personality than the actual two D platformers they do for Super Mario. So, of course, introduce the shade, but of course, there's like some weird licensing issue with shade. Yep, all of this stuff. Oh yeah, here's all I did I skimmed through this fast, but it has the character all the playable characters. The funny thing is, um, cream is like an optional one. And yeah, cream is like an optional, I believe, and so is Omega. From what I remember. Ah, Sonic in the Black Knight. Of course, inspired off King Arthur. Oh, the Japanese the Japanese one is pretty nice in terms of the promotion. Of course, introduces Merlina. And of course, Sonic's like friends and allies and the alter egos of the actual of the actual Knights of the Round Table. Which of course, of course, there's Merlina. And then there's Caliburn. Then there's of course the fake King Arthur. Then here is Tails as the Blacksmith and an Amy as Namiu, Shadow as Sir Lancelot, Knuckles as Sir Gawain, Blaze as Sir Percival, Jet as um, Sir Lamorak, and Silver as Sir Galahad. So, Ooh, I remember playing this, Sonic Sega All-Stars Racing. Of course, it's pretty obvious they were trying to compete with Mario Kart, <laughs> you know, by doing an interesting new spin to it. And then here's more of this, and then more of this. Yep, I'm in the 200s now. Probably halfway, or almost done. 
gift. This gift is very long. <laughs> but then again, we are dealing with 30 years of Sonic the Hedgehog. And... Oh, Team Sonic Racing. They actually put this after the thing. That's interesting. Of course, the team mechanic. Pretty surprised they actually put this after the the, the Sega Sonic All-Stars Racing. Of course. See, they put all this and then all the wisp. And then, of course, all the characters, the playable characters. And they, huh, that's interesting. They didn't even introduce the, what's his name? Oh gosh, I do not remember his name. Sonic 4. Like I said, this book is very long. Very, very long. But I am doing it for you guys. So, Sonic Colors. And of course, introduces Orbot and Cubot, of course. And of course, Sonic Generations. A very positively acclaimed but the story could have been a bit better though where they could have you know built up the thing that's like my only criticism of the of Sonic Generations the gameplay is like perfect but the actual like story is kind of like bland where they could have expanded on it and of course this is this has mixed reviews Sonic Lost World and of course, it introduces the Zeddy, or the Deadly Six, as you call it. <laughs> and there's this. Of course, it introduces the Zeddy. There. Oh, of course. I played this game, and yeah, there are glitches, but it's very playable and stuff. It's better than Sonic 06, I would say. In terms of like the glitches don't kill you as much, but there are still glitches in this game. And I enjoyed it because it's like a beat em up type of game. But I think hopefully, um, you know, because when I looked at Sonic Frontiers, it reminded me of Sonic Boom in terms of the stuff. Of course, the infamous lots of people hated that they made Knuckles like really buff. Which I don't blame them because it's very questionable at best. Then of course it introduces sticks. Then there's lyric. Then there's Q and C. And there's Maya. Oh, being stuck in of course the made the 3DS Sonic Boom Shatter Crystal. This is the one where Amy gets kidnapped. So. And of course, I played this one, Sonic Boom, Fire and Ice, and whatnot. Like, like to me, this could have been like an actual episode. Like, if, if we were to be honest right now, this felt like this could have been like a two-part episode in the actual TV show and whatnot. And of course, they actually did put Defect in the, in the Boom TV show. Of course... A critically positively critically acclaimed Sonic Mania so there's this of course all the zones then of course the stages the enemies yeah they've been they do all of that and very amazing like I said they put so much love into this book that they actually put all the bosses the major bosses the new faces well, I wouldn't really call Mighty and Rain new faces, but I guess for people, for newer generation, they wouldn't know who they are, so. Oh yes, this one is very, like, mixed reception on this game, too. Sonic Forces and stuff. 
introduces Infinite, of course. And then there's the stages, and of course it's going to introduce Infinite because he has to be in the thing, so just all the stages and whatnot. Oh. Wisp on. Then there's the bosses. And then there's Infinite. And then the Rookie. And of course, the Sonic Goes Mobile stuff. There's Sonic Jump, Sonic Jump Fever. Of course, I played Sonic Dash like a long time ago, but I stopped playing. And then here's Sonic Dash 2, Sonic Boom. This one's actually, this one's actually like, I prefer this game over the first one actually. Because they gave each of the characters like a, a like a interesting ability. And I'm surprised they didn't do that for the first one. There's Sonic Runners. Sonic Runners Adventure. Then there's also Sonic Forces Speed Battle, which is of course inspired off Sonic Forces. And yep. But the renders are questionable at best. Like they really tried to recreate the renders. <laughs> and of course the different costumes of the characters. Did that too. And then here's like events, characters. Special Sonic Appearances. Of course, they're going to talk about the Olympic Games. And the, all the Olympic Games. And of course, they're talking about the rivalry between Sonic and Mario. And there's Dream Events, of course. Okay, so, yep, they did this. And here's the renders of the Sonic characters. I wish they would really update this roster. They really need to. Like, they really need it. They, they only put, like, the other Mario and Sonic characters as guest character for one event. And I find that so boring because it's like, I want to play the other guest characters in the other events. But I guess they don't want to. Oh, of course, the infamous Super Smash Brothers. Of course, they gotta mention it. Super Smash Brothers Brawl, of course, and then there's 3DS Wii U, and then there's Ultimate. And of course, the reason I love Ultimate is because they finally got Sora in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I know, they pro Nintendo and Sakurai's team had to go through some hoops just to get Sora. You know, so. I'm so proud of my boy Sora got in. Both Sora and Sonic representing wind in some way. So I'm very... So I'm very happy that they actually got Sora. You know, I know I'm talking about Kingdom Hearts and a Sonic Encyclopedia video, but I really... I was so overjoyed after finding out, like, so much. That they finally made a lot of Cage fans like dream come true. Oh, Sonic Collections, Sonic Jam, and of course Sonic Mega Collection, Mockable. Hmm. Okay. Yep, this is the actual timeline actually. Yep, and it has to go like this. And like that. Yep, actual timeline. And wow. This book is very long. It has... And look at this nice render. It's really nice. And then this is the... Yep, it has about 287 pages. That's a long book. So that was basically my the Sonic Encyclopedia, and here's the back. Very nice. And I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to Leah Serenity Rose here on YouTube. And also follow my 
haul. My friend who got me this book for Christmas, which is superdan underscore cosplay on Instagram. So be sure to follow him because he's a really great friend of mine. So this is, may you all have a wonderful, happy holidays. And may you all have a wonderful, happy new year. This is Leah Sereni Rose, over and out.